Over the past two weeks, I printed hundreds and hundreds of different strain tests and at least 50 benchies to try to tune PET G for my printer. I've used Overture PET G and stuck with that through the entire process. And I've also switched out some different PET Gs because Overture was actually giving me a lot of problems. My goal was to print PET G as fast as possible on my print. And you'll notice in my previous video, the secret to printing PET G was to go slow, but I wanted to push the limits. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I tuned PET G, where I started out looking like this and then went all the way to this. Hey guys, if you guys are new here, my name is Daniel and on this channel, I just talk about 3D printing as well as just probably other projects that I'm doing in my personal life. If you guys are interested in that, remember to subscribe down below. For your context, I'm printing on the FlashForge Adventure 4, but this process should apply to any printer out there. In the software that I'm using, I use a combination. I use Simplify 3D as well as Kira and Super Slicer. The reason why I use Simplify 3D to start off is because for my printer, it works the best for being able to batch print. So I'll print eight different strain tests in one go instead of manually having to set up each print, which takes about eight minutes. So every eight minutes I'm running to my printer and just watching it. Instead, if I set up eight different prints on the same bed, each with one certain setting tweaked a little bit and see where the best results are, then at least I have an hour between each print. On Super Slicer and Kira, I'm sure you can do that. However, it did not work for FlashForge. For other printers, it probably works well. There are certain quirks about these slicers. The important aspects of this experiment were that the extrusion width was 0.42, extrusion multiplier at one, and I have a nozzle diameter of 0.4. I've got three solid bottom layers, two solid top layers, and two outer perimeters. Infill was set to zero for the circular cylinder tests, and the bed temperature was at 85 degrees. Cooling was set to come on in layer three with a fan speed of 25%. For the speeds, I use a default printing speed of 40 millimeters per second or 2400 millimeters per minute. The outline under speed was 50% of that. I did not play around with the speed overrides to adjust the printing speed for layers below a certain number of seconds. This was a key setting for me to achieve those beautiful posts in my secret for printing Petchy. But here it's for me to push my printer to its limits for printing speed and 40 millimeters per second was already a lot faster than what I did before. During the experiment, I found out my printer wasn't capable of pushing any further. This is because the power that the nozzle generates in order to heat the filament wasn't able to keep up with the extrusion rate for PET G at greater than 40 millimeters per second. And how I determined the speed is because there was clicking in my extruder going any faster. One last key thing, which I know a lot of people will comment is, did you dry your filament? And yes, I did. I dried my Overture filament for 24 hours in the past, as well as another six hours in the middle of this experiment. So to start off, I decided to print this print at different temperatures. Some people use a temperature tower. However, I actually felt more comfortable using this print because I wasn't adding any retraction settings to it. So a temperature tower would have just looked terrible. I figured that I can judge a circular pattern to see how well the cylinders form and forget about the stringing in between. And I continued to use this post model throughout the other tweaks that I did for stringing. And the major concern for me with Pet G is stringing because everyone says Pet G is very runny and very prone to stringing. So I really wanted to dial in that retraction using this model. The post diameter was six millimeters and the reason why I didn't go to four is because in the past with Pet G, I didn't have very good success printing it. On top of that, my printer has a bit of a stuttering effect. If you're wondering what that is, you can check the video in the top right corner. So when I was looking at my prints, 265 looked like the best print out there. I was getting some weird bulges on my print that kind of spiraled up the tube as you went lower in temperature. And I wasn't really sure what this was. My suspicion is that the inner layer or the inner perimeter was printing and not actually adhering to the layer below it. And there's a lot of blobbing in the center. And this translated to the outer layer, which caused this weird spiraling up effect. So at 265, I got the best cylinder, and I decided to try 255 and 265 a couple more times just to make sure it's not a fluke. After getting the temperature down, I decided to tackle the retraction line. So the results of this was the optimal amount of retraction was around five to six millimeters, where the stringing pretty much completely stopped. Going any further than that was a bit of a waste, and sometimes the results actually turned out a little bit worse. Then I adjusted the coasting setting, and the purpose of the coasting setting is just before a perimeter ends, 
the extruder stops extruding filament. And the reason why you'd want to use this is because when you're extruding filament, you're actually adding a lot of pressure in that tube. So if you immediately lift the extruder after printing a perimeter, you'll notice that filament continues to ooze out. So really, you don't actually need to continue to apply pressure at the very end of the perimeter because there's already a lot of built up pressure in the Bowden tube. And coasting helps relieve that pressure a bit more. And theoretically, that should be able to allow you to lower your retraction length. But my testing with coasting concluded that there wasn't really any big of a difference if I used coasting or not. And sometimes using too much coasting wasn't good at all. I probably could have dug a little bit further into this, but at this point I've already sunk in quite a few hours printing the other stuff. So I decided to stick to a coasting value of around 0.2 to 0.5. I figured that's about a nozzle diameter or so, and if you're printing fine parts, you don't want a very large coasting distance, Otherwise, you might not even actually be pushing filament through if the perimeter length is less than your coasting length. So that's why I went with about a 0.2 to 0.5. At this point, I was getting a Z-seam that bulged out quite a bit. And I was trying to figure out how to get rid of this. On my previous video, which I told you about the secret of printing PETG, I actually had a Z-seam that indented into the same print. However, this experiment, I was trying to go as fast as possible that my printer would allow me to print PETG. So I didn't want to go at those super slow speeds and the Z-seam bulging out obviously was an artifact of speed. So I decided to vary the speed now, going down from about 40 millimeters per second all the way down to 25 millimeters per second. And obviously at 25 millimeters per second, the results were a lot better. However, not perfect. At this point, I figured I hit the limits of Synthify 3D and started to tune my profile in Super Slicer. The reason I went to Super Slicer is because there's certain settings in Super Slicer that Synthify 3D doesn't have. Certain things like the wipe feature actually brings the nozzle inwards a little bit to the inner perimeter and does a wipe there. Versus Simplify 3D, it wipes on the outer perimeter and causes that outer perimeter to sometimes bulge. And there's also a key setting in Super Slicer that allows you to set the maximum number of G1 commands, which is basically a print a line command, as well as the shortest length of line that's allowed. And Simplify 3D just doesn't have that. And that's why there's a stuttering effect when I use Simplify 3D. So I brought over my settings from Simplify 3D over to Super Slicer, and these were a 6.5 millimeter retraction length, a 265 degrees nozzle temperature, as well as a 0.5 millimeter coasting setting. And in Super Slicer, I proceeded to print the six millimeter retraction posts, and the prints turned out with less of a bulge on the Z seam versus Simplify 3D. So now it was time to move on to the Benchy test. So I loaded up the Benchy on Super Slicer and hit print. The first results came out, you know, half decent. I mean, fairly good actually for a Benchy, but I wasn't satisfied with this. I wanted to completely get rid of stringing, as well as the bridging in the front window was very bad. So I decided to tune a bit more. And then I continued to tune and tune and tune, and things kind of just went downhill from there. Another thing I forgot to mention, I've also lowered my temperature at this point. And the reason why I lowered my temperature from 265 to 240 actually, is because at 265, there was just way too much stringing. On my stringing test, it got rid of it. However, I think printing smaller features and smaller travel moves cause stringing. And that's the downside of using the six millimeter post to tune your printer. So if your printer doesn't have the stuttering effect, I would recommend to go with four millimeter diameter posts about 20 millimeters apart. If you can make them 10 millimeters apart, that's even better. After five or 10 benches and some of them failed halfway through, I decided to switch back to Simplify 3D and just try it on there and see what happened. Lo and behold, Simplify 3D managed to print out a decent benchy on its first shot. Although it wasn't completely perfect, it seemed actually a lot better quality than Super Slicer. And the biggest problems I had was at the hull, the overhang in the beginning, which is the steepest, there's a bit of warping there. Also the fine features, when you're only printing the four door posts, I got a lot of under extrusion there. I couldn't explain why this was happening in Super Slicer. When I was watching this area print, it looked like the filament was balling up on the extruder and just didn't actually lay itself down. And eventually it was printing in thin air. I turned on the fan speed and it helped a little bit, but I was still getting some under extrusion or some layers lifting up. And for your reference, I tried 5% and 15% fan speed. If I turn the fan completely off, then I got terrible overhangs. I also tried to cut the bench in half so I would cut down my print time so I only printed that fine feature and started there. And the settings that I used there worked, and when I implemented it on the full benchy, the full benchy didn't work. So I think really it's just all the buildup on the nozzle from the previous layers 
especially the bottom layers when it's going over infill and going over perimeter, the nozzle just swiping all their filament and just picking it up. That's causing a lot of filament buildup, which that filament buildup has to go somewhere. Other things that I tried was switching my pet G. So I went from Overture to Hatchbox. And lo and behold, on Super Slicer, Hatchbox actually printed flawlessly. And this is what the Hatchbox print looked like. I printed two of these to make sure it wasn't a fluke, and sure enough, it printed well the second time. What I did notice with the Hatchbox filament is that it coated the nozzle evenly rather than blobbing, which I saw in the Overture. So it looks like Hatchbox Pet G is a bit more viscous than Overture filament at 240 degrees. So now I was left scratching my head, wondering why Hatchbox was better than Overture. Why it yielded a perfect print the first time and the second time. With Overture at this point, I probably got two or three semi-successful benchies, and then there were at least 20 benchies that failed halfway through. So I decided to pull out other pet G's I got. So I tried Polymaker as well as Ceramic. I find Polymaker has very inconsistent layer heights, which can be seen on the outer perimeter, but it still printed a benchy semi-okay. In the Ceramic filament, it had issues too. So I figured, is this a black filament issue? Where maybe the certain pigments in the black cause it to print slightly differently. At this point, I went through Super Slicer with a fine tooth comb to try to figure out every single setting, if it was important to stringing or just print quality in general, and turn it on and off and just tested it. I changed things like Z-Hop, Gap Fill, Extrusion Width, Feature Speeds, Wipe While Retracting, Retracting a certain percentage before the wipe, Extrusion Multiplier, and Minimum Layer Time to just name a few. But the settings I changed the most were the different fan speeds for certain features as well as speeds. After so many different changes and dropping my speed down, I've come down to a very slow pace unfortunately, where the max speed is pretty much 20 millimeters per second for most items out there. But this is still faster than my other video where I talked about the secret of printing Petchy. The speeds there were under 10 millimeters per second. At this speed though, I was able to print Area 1 Pet G. However, for Overture, the results looked like this. Everything looked great up until those fine features, but then that's where it failed. There was one very weird quirk that I noticed about Super Slicer, and this probably happens in more layers than just this one. So if I just scroll through this single layer and just show you what's happening on the timeline. You can see it first prints the outline of that one perimeter, then it moves and prints this infill here. But then all of a sudden, it doesn't print the perimeter there. So I expect Super Slicer to have first printed the outline and then printed the infill here. But it only printed the infill, which poses a problem in my opinion. And I'll explain that in just a sec. But if we continue on, we can see that right here, it places these two silver lines. And if we look what those are, this is the gap fill. And then if we continue on, it prints only the gap fill. And then it prints the gap fill at the front. And then it prints this bridge or internal bridge infill. After we go to that, then it starts printing the perimeter around these items. So I'm very confused as to why Super Slicer is doing this, and if anyone has an explanation, I would love to know in the comments down below. Now let me just go to another layer, the one just before it, so layer 199. If you look at what happens here, prints the perimeters, prints the infill, perimeters, infill, perimeter, infill, perimeter, infill, and lastly, perimeter and infill. That was very weird, that one layer, layer 100, is doing that. I'll just go to layer 101 just for fun as well. So if we do this again, perimeter, infill, perimeter, infill, perimeter, infill. I think this is a bridge infill. And then we do perimeter, infill, perimeter, infill. And I did notice this weird effect when I was watching my printer print this exact layer. And I went into the slicer just to make sure I was seeing things correctly. And I did notice also the perimeter where I was printing over here, it didn't adhere very well on that print that I was watching. So if you guys are big Super Slicer fans, just know that there's still some bugs in this software and I think this is a bug. I don't think this is very normal for a slicer to do. At this point, I turned on Kira to see if it would make any difference in the results. I know that Simplified 3D works, however, there was a stuttering effect on the smokestack at the top, and I know that Kira doesn't have that issue. I pretty much put in my basic settings in Kira, like a 6.5mm retraction, I put in 240 degree nozzle temperature, 80 degree bed temperature, a Z-hop of 0.1mm, and left their default coasting setting. And I pressed print, and the benchy came out looking 90% perfect. There's some very minor zits on there, and some stringing, however, overall the surface quality was quite good. 
And in the section where I was only printing the four posts, it looked pretty darn good. And that was the biggest failure point for Super Slicer. But I couldn't take Slicer for an answer. I wanted to figure out with Super Slicer what was the issue. And at this point, I had to pull the big guns. I had to order a new Adventure 4. I have shown you guys on this channel how much of an issue I've had with the Adventure 4 and just tuning it. I thought I got it dialed in, but there's certain things about the printer that are still a bit unsettling to me. So I ordered the new Adventure 4, it came in, I imported my Super Slicer profile on this new printer. At this point my speed was 15 to 20 millimeters per second on all the features, which failed on my first Adventure 4, but this new Adventure 4 yielded great results. So at the end of the day, it looks like I'm still able to get a decent print on my first Adventure 4 using different software like Kira and Simplify 3D, but it was looking like my first printer was not tuned or calibrated as well as a new printer here. Some of the things that were better on my new printer was that the bed was actually level with the gantry this time, and the z-axis doesn't wobble like crazy. And I'm going to be making a video, there's actually certain differences between my second printer and my first printer, where there were slight revisions of components, so I think these played a huge role in getting the Super Slicer print to work. So for now, I've got reasonable Super Slicer results and was able to print with Overture Pet G, which was giving me a lot of headaches on my first printer. I mean, it's not completely perfect because the overhang right at the hull right here, there's still a bit of an indent, which I don't like, but right now, I probably don't need to print things that need the mechanical properties of Pet G, which have an overhang of 50 to 60 degrees. So I'm happy with my profile in Super Slicer and will continue to tweak it here and there to try to perfect it. But I think this concludes this video that I was able to tune Petchy from looking like a crazy mess all the way to a pretty good Benchy. Note that Kira and Simplify 3D printing with Overture filament was able to get great overhang results. Same with Hatchbox filament on Super Slicer. However, it looks like Overture with Super Slicer hasn't yet got the cooling tuned to be able to print overhangs. But it definitely is doable and I'm kind of sick of printing Benchies, so that's why I've stopped the experiment here. Now some of you guys probably have better quality printers out there or different designs and your mileage will vary. Some of you guys might try to take months to tune your pet G and other guys you might get it on the first try because your printer is calibrated for it. But regardless, I hope this video, even though it's a bit longer, helps you tune your pet G for your printer and this is giving you a very real life example of how I struggled with pet G and overcame that. I found that there's a lot of general advice for pet G but no one really shows their process. If you guys want to see more about my process or have questions, please leave a comment down below and perhaps I'll do a follow up video because there's a lot of information I learned and couldn't pack it into this 20 or 30 minute video that I'm making here. But the general process is there. You guys have to tune your temperature first, your attraction speed, then maybe play with coasting and wiping. And if that first bench sheet doesn't come out right, then change your speeds and change your fan cooling and potentially play with your Z-hop settings, which will prevent your nozzle from dragging along the top layer and building up filament on your nozzle. Now, I'll probably make a video in the future talking about individual settings and their effects on the PETG print. If you guys are interested in that, please subscribe down below, and while you're there, hit the like button as well. Now, I know some of you guys are looking for my exact settings, so here they are. I'll just scroll through them, and note this is for the Adventure 4, and I think if you have a printer that's similar in configuration, mainly just if you got a long Bowden tube. This printer has a Bowden tube that's about half a meter. You can probably use fairly similar settings to start your tuning off. And guys, that's a wrap.